beekeepers. This is a pile of dead bees. Here it is, March 18th, winter's almost over. Bees are still dying. I've been doing this for 11 years. My bees always, always die out during the winter. Why? Because your queen stopped laying. The bees that she created in the fall going into winter have to live long enough to make it to the spring. I'm up in mid-Michigan. I'm surrounded by crop farmers. So, this is the triangle of death. The three things that will shorten the life of your honeybee. <clears throat> the toxic chemicals the crop farmers put in the environment don't go away. You bees pick them up, put them into their hive, changing your frames every three to four years to get rid of the old wax may help, but the bees will pick up pollen and create honey the following year that's going to contain the same chemicals. So changing your frames every three years may not help. Viral mites are a big issue because the commercial beekeepers, they go out to the almonds of California they may not have varroa mites, but they're going to pick them up from other bees. And they're going to bring them back to various places around the United States. If you're a backyard beekeeper or sideliner and you don't take your bees out of the state and you treat for varroa mites and you have commercial bees brought into your area, guess what? Your bees are going to have varroa mites again. That's why it's a never-ending battle. And the weather, well, we can't really do much about that other than bring your bees inside but when you bring them inside, they're not getting fresh air. The chemicals that are in the hive is, is the only thing they get. Sometimes it's better to have fresh air blowing through the hive so for them to get some fresh, clean air. So I, I agree with that. But if your colonies get really small and they're outside, we're supposed to have teens in a couple nights. And most of my colonies would be dead. So in order to keep them alive, I bring them in. But for you beekeepers that don't go through hives during the winter, don't do indoor hive inspections. See, I do indoor hive inspections. And you go out and you check your bees at the end of winter, spring, when it warms up, and you see a bunch of dead bees in the bottom of your, your hive, the bottom screen. Um, they didn't die all at once, okay? They gradually die over time, just like my bees are doing. I'm witnessing it firsthand. I go through them every two weeks, and I just clean this one out, see? I clean it out, put it there in a pile, and I get it outside. Uh, I have thought that would help keep them alive longer, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. If you leave the dead bees in there, you clean them out. It's just the same. Now, nobody's going to do anything about this, and the reason why, well, who makes money from this situation? The toxic chemicals... They've got these crop farmers believing that no-till is the best way to go. I'm 57 years old. I remember a time when farmers went out and plowed their fields. It was the first thing they did. They got the weed seeds underneath the soil, 8 inches or so, so they didn't have to worry about the weeds. Then they'd go through and disc it lightly before they planted. And that got rid of the weeds. I had Amish neighbors that farmed they never used chemicals and they had some of the best looking fields that i can remember but nowadays they don't do that you rarely ever see a farmer plow a field he would rather go out there and spray it first and then disc it and then plant seeds with the uh, neonicotinoids neonicotinoids however you want to pronounce it the pink seeds with coating on them to control the pest so your chemical companies, your ag companies are making a lot of money off that, and your crop farmers are still making money. And the varroa mites, who makes money from the varroa mites? Well, of course, your beekeeping supply stores and your commercial beekeepers. How do commercial beekeepers make money from varroa mites? Well, there's a steady demand of backyard beekeepers, sideliners, that people that continue to want to have honeybees like me, they have their bees die during the winter. And they'll go out and they'll buy new bees. And these packages, 
you're not going to find anybody to admit this, but the old queens, the commercial beekeepers, they requeen every year. They don't kill that queen. They put that queen in a package of some of their old wore out bees that were in the almonds in California. And they know those bees aren't going to do very well. That queen's not going to do very well that year. So they get rid of all of that. They get a new queen and they start that colony over again. In the summertime, it's basically, they make honey, but they're basically rebuilding their colonies for the following winter pollinating season. That's how they make most of their money. If they made money with honey, I, I think you would be more people more concerned about what's going on, about the lack of uh, colonies and keeping them alive. But no, they love the money the corporations have. That's why this, what this all boils down to is the corporations controlling your government. Uh, these toxic chemicals, they're going to cause maybe not you, but somebody you know to end up with cancer. It's in your food, it's in your water, it's in the air you breathe. My wife has had breast cancer. I have neighbors that have cancer. This is basically a cancer cluster where I live. And my bees are telling me the environment where I live is not safe for me. I've been outside several times during the summer, heard tractors in the area, and smelled the chemicals they were spraying. Not all the time do you, uh, do you smell those chemicals. Now pause this. I know firsthand that the chemicals of crop farmers are using kill honeybees. I had honeybees killed May of 2019 here in the state of Michigan. I knew the farmer and I called and ended up talking to his mother, told him what had happened. They never came out to apologize. So the next day I called the state of Michigan and this lady rushed right out. It sounded like she was so concerned about my honeybees, took samples and a month later she told me, yep, your honeybees died from the chemicals that crop farmer used. So I thought, okay, maybe they'll do something about it. Then a month after that, here it is now, August, they send me this letter in the mail claiming the crop farmer did nothing wrong. And they tried to tell me it wasn't windy that day. Your government basically lies to you. They're basically uh, just pacifiers trying to keep you uh, content, believing the, the government's going to help out and everything else. But I was, I was here that morning. It was early in the morning. It was... The sun hadn't even come up yet, really. And 150 yards south of me, there was a farmer out there. He was planting. And the wind was coming from the south. Very strong wind, about 20 miles an hour. And I had hives out here facing that direction. And I had to go do an electrical job. So I came back around, around noon. Of course, I didn't smell anything in the morning. The air, this air smelled just fine. I come home around noon and my bees are coming out of the hive dying. I got the video on YouTube, a couple of videos of that. So those chemicals, that was, I consider a high dosage and that kills your bees instantly. But your bees are getting a constant low dosage. If you live around crop farmers, you have fields like this, your bees are getting a low dosage of those chemicals constantly all summer long. And there's a lot of beekeepers on YouTube. A lot of them are successful with honeybees. Do they live around crop farmers, okay? Just because somebody is very successful with honeybees, that doesn't mean you are going to be successful. The most important thing is where you live. And that will depend on how this triangle of death is going to affect your honeybees. I can't do anything about the toxic chemicals. I can't stop the crop farmers from doing their thing around here because their government's corrupt. And I can't stop commercial beekeepers from moving hives in and out of my area because they got the corporate farms that have all the money. They make $200 per colony out there in the almonds pollinating. Okay, they love the money. They can make probably six, dollars $700 per colony per year. Like two or $300 pollinating. After the almonds, they probably go somewhere else. And then if they pull off a package of bees... From that colony, they make another $100, $125. And then the honey they make, they make honey almost all year round, another $200. So they make a lot of money. Do you think they want that to stop? No. So I can't stop commercial beekeepers from bringing in rural mites. I can't stop the crop farmers from using the toxic chemicals. And I can't do anything about the weather. And I keep putting videos on YouTube talking about the toxic chemicals killing my honeybees. And they're also killing you. The rich people 
Enjoy the money. When you go to the hospital, they enjoy that money from all your medical treatments, okay? Haven't you noticed they don't really want healthy Americans? We are the most obese nation on earth, other than the Samoan Islands or something like that, or Marshall Islands, somewhere out there in the Pacific. But overall, Americans are not healthy because they don't want you to be healthy, okay? So I know firsthand, from my experiences, that this lady here, She's corrupted by the money she gets from her government salary. She doesn't care about honeybees. She's just a pacifier to keep us. Well, let me show you something else. If you haven't seen my videos. Okay, if you haven't seen my videos, I've explained this in some of my videos. This is basically how this country works. The money flows up to the owners. The owners are the 1%, the deep state. And we have the managers, the managers, the government, the media, hospitals, or schools, and the CIA basically is the worst part of our government goes around the world controlling other countries. And us people, you know, we're the livestock. You know, real livestock, cows, horses, and sheep, They, you want them to be healthy in order to make money. We, we, the people are livestock that they don't want you to be healthy because the hospitals make money. When you go to the hospital for your treatment, they make money. And then the people that own the hospitals, everything's owned by the 1%. They make money when you go to the hospital. So this is basically how this country works. Um, it's not a democracy. Every four years they convince you that some politician is going to save you. Just like right now, it's Trump again. Did he save you the first time he was president? No. And you know, it doesn't matter who you vote for. We have the Electoral College. So our government manipulates everything that goes on here in the United States. And they use the media. A bunch of, bunch of half-truths, false statements and stuff on the news. I don't watch mainstream media. And I suggest you don't watch mainstream media. Uh, watch Dialogue Works. You'll see some good guests on his show. Okay, that's all I have to say. Um, I didn't show you any honeybees, but uh, I've got honeybees on the floor here. i got to pick them up, put them back into this hive. Indoor winter hive inspections. It's the only way I've been able to keep my honeybees going. And they're getting smaller and smaller, and hopefully it'll warm up outside. Right now it's, it's about 30-something. It's going to get colder this week. And it was warm, but now winter's coming back. You see snowflakes. So that's that's the part of this right here. The weather the weather's gonna get me. Okay, the weather's gonna get me. There's nothing I can do about it other than bring bees inside. Okay, thank you.